All right, Tan, welcome into Borderline. Uh, alongside Bernie, I'm Jeff. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in this week, as always, as we say Happy Thanksgiving. Wow. Um, yeah. Happy a, a Thanksgiving. Special, special Thanksgiving episode for uh, for everybody. So hopefully uh, you'll still get a chance during your uh, during your week with family to download the podcast yeah. and listen. But, uh, you know, they asked us, they, they said, hey, you guys going to do a show this week? Really? Hell yeah, we're going to do a show. Well, that's what we do. We work. On, we do. On the, holidays, we hey, work. Hey, by the way. Now, you know, that one time that I coughed in the intro, yeah. now every time it comes on, like, all I want to do is cough. Like, I can't get myself <laughs> to not, like, it's so hard to not cough now during the intro, just because I totally did it like, Totally, yeah. like, psychosomatic. Yeah. <laughs> it's so bad. Like, like as soon as it came on, I was like, oh, man, I really got to cough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so much to get to this week. Seriously, mm-hmm. a lot to talk about, um, even though it is the week of Thanksgiving. Uh, quick uh, thank you to everyone who uh, reached out and uh, gave us well wishes on our on our one hundredth episode last week? That was uh, that was fun. It went too fast. I mean, we we probably in in hindsight we probably could have done like a two hour special because I feel bad. Oh, because I, be I feel like I feel like um, I didn't give our our top five moments in one hundred seconds. It was a cool idea, and I'm glad that we yeah. did it. But I feel like we should have done our top five moments over 100 episodes in 100 seconds. I feel like we should have done it and then maybe expound upon it a little bit just so we could explain. Yeah. Like, for yeah, example, yeah. like like with, with JT, you know, I threw I threw our interview with Jacob Trzynski in my top five. I didn't really mm-hmm. get a chance to explain it. But um, mm-hmm. it was just a powerful interview. I mean, he you know, here's a dude who's really, and he was very honest with us, and he said that he'd come on anytime and talk about it. I mean, he's a guy who really battles through anxiety and, and through anger issues and, you know, one of the things that really helped him out was playing football. And and you can still see that anger in him when he plays. Remember, he told us, he's like, literally, I want to kill the person who's next to me. I mean, it was a very powerful interview. Yeah. And I feel like we didn't get a chance to really describe that too much. But but great episode. So much fun. And and uh, thanks again, everybody, for, for listening. Yeah. 101 episodes now. Yeah, I know. Isn't that crazy? By the way, way off topic, because I wouldn't be me unless I did something like that. We're house-sitting this thanksgiving week yeah this is this is funny so this is good we you know we were gonna get an airbnb so mom didn't have to worry about dealing with us because you know at her age it's just you know it's a nightmare for them to deal with us so julie's friend hey we're going out of town we're gonna have to pay all these people to come handle this dog and blah 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 we're like oh we're animal people this you know no big deal right wrong dog (laughs) is an absolute disaster (laughs) An absolute disaster. I can't get it. I can't get near it. I love animals. I love dogs. This dog can't deal with me. Apparently, someone that looks exactly like me must have beaten this dog half to death at some point because it is terrified of me and freaks out whenever I'm around. Oh my gosh. And then, so, you know, I, 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 I did get, hear it. I did hear it be- just, just uh, before we came on when we because were trying to I walked, the, the lighting situation. Yeah, I, heard, I, I heard walked it. to the wow. back of this room. Yeah, I walked to the back of this room, which is upstairs, away from yeah. it. And the fact that I got close to the stairs, it started barking. Yeah, he just, he just heard, he or she just heard your voice and wanted to kill you. Yeah, literally, yeah. it's the craziest animal I've ever seen. It so, like it. any, uh, any time that your friends are like, oh, no, it won't be that big of a dick, don't just don't do it. They're going to have to pay. Like, I don't know how a regular dog sitter would have handled this animal because once it, like, it took two and a half hours to get it in yesterday. They had to call over uh, one of the daughter's friends, this younger female. The dog seemed to be much more receptive to her. And then even then, it was a struggle. Like, oh my God. It's been an absolute disaster. Disaster. So but now hey, you're like, we should. And we got two, two more days. We, you know, it's only Wednesday for us. We're taping it. You know, we're here through Saturday. <laughs> oh my god! So hopefully, in that time frame, the dog will eventually be like, "Oh, okay, these people are all right." Yeah, you know, but I mean, it's better with Julie than it is with me. But man, crazy! Don't do it, folks. Don't. Well, on a positive note, on a positive note, you yep. look good because when we first came on, for those of you watching the show, we're having some major issues with our lighting because yeah. uh, it just so happens we're in the middle of a tropical storm today, the day before. <laughs> Thanksgiving here in Charleston, and I think yeah. you had some like serious sun coming in, so I'm like way dark, and you got the sunshine. You you look good though. It was well, funny. you had you had the it, ceiling fan on with the light 
attached to the ceiling fan. When we first came yeah. on, it literally looked like you were a helicopter pilot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's 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 a it's a different setup for sure. But so uh, I can we're still see the fan. Hey, but at least it's, it's there. Hey, there it is. Yep, yeah. it's it's there. Especially with your headset, you literally yeah. look like you were like a helicopter pilot. Yeah, yeah, like like a uh, yeah, like start doing a uh, traffic. For, yes. I mean, it's, no, yeah. It's, it literally start like doing that. the traffic report in the year. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, don't do it, folks. Don't do it. Your friends are like, oh, no, the dog's fine. You won't have a problem. Lies. It's all lies. I, th I think it's ironic that you and I are both having and both being animal people, both having issues with dogs. Um, Kathy's dogs. Kathy's middle daughter. We watched her dog because they went to Las Vegas for almost a week. So we watched we watched their dog. Their dog is seven months old. So it, still a puppy. But when I say puppy, it's a 75 pound, seven month old uh, lab mm. that has not been trained yet. So he still jumps <laughs> up on people and still bites. And I don't know if you can you you get one the camera, but, but oh yeah, he took a big chunk out of my arm. Wow. Up, That's not good. In, yeah. yeah. Up in here. Yep. Yeah. He got me, he got me good. Like through my jacket and everything. Cause it was actually cold <laughs> last week. I'm like, God, <laughs> that's dang, crazy. Like, dog. It, it, like, like, don't be afraid to tell your dog to stay down when someone comes. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it is okay to train dogs. Well, and that and that's the thing. That's that's the that's the issue we're having is that we always and some people think this mean. Most people who know anything about dogs know it's not. But we always crate trained our labs, mm -hmm. and and uh, I, I know it sounds mean to some people who don't know. But when you crate train your dog, you know they need boundaries, right? They need that discipline, and they also need some place that is a safe a safe place for them. So yep. you know, with our dogs, it got to be where. Even though, even though we would put it in the crate after after several months, you know the, the crate door would be open. They'd still go in there just as a safe place, right? Because yeah. their blankets in there and their, you know, their yeah. toys. But it's home anyway, base. But yeah, this has not been done yet with this dog, and it <laughs> a nightmare. Wow. All right. So all right, yeah. So yeah. Are we ready? Are we ready to move on? Let Let's move on from dogs because I love dogs. I love dogs, and this one has just been I don't know, it, an adventure for sure. Yeah. I know it's again ironic that we both had to do this like <laughs> within a week or two of each other. Yeah. yeah, right. Yep. All right. Well, good luck with that. Um, <laughs> all right. So again, thanks everybody who listened. Uh, huge week. Uh, by the way, uh, oh, sorry. One more thing before we get going. I had a chance to do basketball on the radio for Sirius XM this past week. So much fun to be back on the radio. I really miss doing the radio. Yeah. Uh, little rusty, especially doing basketball. It, it's it's fast, man. Uh, but mm -hmm. I love the description of being on radio, you know, the, you know, dribbling with the right hand into the right wing, down to the baseline, Going right to left. Yeah. Yeah, to yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, doing yeah. all that stuff. I yeah. really like, like, I, I feel like I kind of got into the groove after, after a minute, but, um, all that description it's, it's, uh, it's different, it, right? It, it is. Yeah. But it was so much fun, but great event here in Charleston. Um, you know, a lot of these, a lot of these, um, regular season conf uh, non-conference tournaments mm -hmm. in basketball, uh, have great causes like out in Maui and, you know, they're trying to raise money for all the people who are still yeah. homeless out in Maui, sure. uh, here in Charleston, it's the Shriners children's, uh, Charleston classic. So oh, yeah. it, it raises money for the Shriners children's hospitals and burn units across the country. Man, Bernie, it, it, and they would bring out you know some of these kids and honor them at the media timeouts. Amazing! It's so sad to see yeah. what these kids have persevered through with burns and with uh, disabilities. But great event, and uh, uh, Bob Fuller was the guy was the president who we had on the air. So shout out! Not probably won't listen, but he, he's he's <laughs> big he's, shout, uh, Yeah, but he's he's uh, seen a couple of the cornhole stuff. So anyway. Uh, just a great, just a great event here in Charleston and good to be a part of, but it's fun to do. Who, it's fun. It, who, it made me think I about love doing... these tournaments. Don't you love these tournaments? I do. They're exciting. Yeah. They mean something, you know, yeah. we, we actually had a, we had actually had a big time field. We had LSU, we had Utah, we had Wake Forest, uh, we had Houston, they're ranked number six in the country, Dayton, which brought about 3000 fans. Uh, I mean, it was insane. It was a great tournament. The final, uh, not so much Houston really nope. kicked the pants off of, off of Dayton, but Really? Well, I mean, Houston's good. I mean, yeah, yeah, Houston, yeah, Houston beat Dayton in the championship, and Houston's really good. So, how long? How long before he puts them on probation? Uh, he's been there ten years now. So far, so good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, did well? Didn't he have to take five years off? Yeah, he wasn't he allowed did. to. It was, coach? It was that, I, we we were talking about this the show the cause timelines. thing. Remember, he was at Oklahoma. He was at Indiana, and then yeah, and then he had. I think he had the show cause thing, and he went. Didn't he go to the NBA for a little bit? I can't. Did Kel Samson was at Indiana? You sure? Yeah, he was at Indiana. Yep, yep, yep. We looked it up. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And his yeah. son played for him at Oklahoma, and he's he's coaching with him now. But 
But man, he's still killing it. He's got he's got some he kn- players. Hey, and they are good. Yeah, he. I mean, tr- look when he that area, Houston, that like that area puts out. Oddly enough, it's known for football, but that area puts out a lot of basketball talent. It usually doesn't stay home, so he's getting I'm a sure. lot of that talent to stay home. So, but it's yeah, yeah. it's an impressive area talent wise. So good yep. for them. They're, they're yeah, tough, so man. Great, they're great, physical. Great field. Yeah, yeah. They're ranked. They're ranked number two in the uh, preseason in the Big Twelve behind Kansas. And of course, Kansas got spanked last night by Marquette. But anyway, so <laughs> they? Uh, we'll just I haven't even from I, that. I haven't even been able to watch any of these tournaments. I love them. I, I actually, North Carolina will probably lose today. First team they've played that's you know not awful. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, fun they, tournament. They're, fun. they're, they're out in the Bahamas. They're in that one. You know, they play in that uh, that they play inside. I, God, my brain's not working. And basically, like a conference center, like a con, you know, it's it's basically in a ballroom. Like the, uh, we battle would, for Atlantis. Yeah, that we would have, yeah. you know, like a big cornhole tournament, and they basically turn those into uh, basketball yeah. arenas, which is crazy. I, I actually broadcast uh, uh, one of those tournaments down there. Did you really? It's, huh? Yeah, it's great. Yeah, when I was with the College of Charleston, when Bobby Cremens was coaching, we went down there and played in it one year. And yeah, it's 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 a ballroom. They, you know what though? They do a great <laughs> job though. They they treat everyone like royalty. Like as soon as we landed there, mm-hmm. we literally got a police escort straight down to the arena for practice. I mean, literally you, like red carpet stuff. I mean, it was, you don't it get was that great. with cornhole. <laughs> hey, <laughs> no, not exactly. So speaking of cornhole though, and speaking of radio, yeah, it, yeah. it did ma- it did make me wonder like. Like, could you like, like, could I broadcast cornhole? Like, like, what if we had a cornhole? What if I started a cornhole radio network, like the CRN? <laughs> I mean, would would anyone listen to the cornhole radio network? Like, it'd be so much fun to describe, you know? Why not? Right? I mean, I feel I like know. a lot of people that would be traveling for whatever reason that couldn't attend whatever a big event like that. Yeah. Why not? Why Sell not? It to Sirius XM. I mean, I got an in now, dude. dude Sirius XM, right? Look at yeah, you, man. You're always thinking. That's a great idea. I shouldn't idea. have said it out loud because now someone else is going to do it. Well, but, yeah, right. But I did, I did, I did have fun with it. Um, hey, uh, don't you have some football coming up this weekend? Don't you have like – or no, no, no. You're, you're going to be – speaking of Cornhole, aren't you going to be at like the SEC championship SEC game? SEC championship some? game next weekend. Next weekend. Okay, Next good. weekend. That'll, that'll yeah. give us something to talk about next week. Yeah, right? uh, it's trying to get all the uh, logistics hammered out as we speak, actually. So it should be, it should be quite, a, quite a time. Actually. So are you going to be there on behalf of the ACL or is this a Johnsonville thing? Uh, I'm it? actually being, I'm at, I guess both because we're, they're using our, uh, our uh, floor. They're, you, you know, using our uh, broadcast court floor. They're using our LEDs. They're using me. Um, and they're having kind of a big sponsor thing. The couple pros are going to be there and oh, very you cool. know, they'll br- they'll be bringing in, you know, some, Probably some names from different schools. I'm sure there'll be some Georgia and some Alabama people there since those are the two schools that'll be represented. So it, it should be uh, two days, Friday and Saturday, you know, leading up to the game on Saturday. So it should be a really good time. Looking forward to it. It's going to be fun. Now, is this the only place we're doing this? Or are we doing it like at other champ- – like the Big This is the only or? thing that we're doing that I know okay. of with the floor, obviously, and the LEDs and all that. I know that uh, I believe Stacy and idea. Trey are going to the Big 12 championship in Texas. So, okay. um I think this; those two are the only. But you know, I don't know exactly what they're doing there, other than I think maybe smoozing. You um, know. Hey, if they want to send me to the Big Ten Championship just to watch my Iowa Hawkeyes get right, the, come on, eight man, out of them by Michigan or Ohio State, I'll go. Find out. I mean, why not? Why not hold them? Right? Why not hold Michigan or Ohio State to like twenty-one points? Maybe block a punt. Get one drive that score. You never know. You never Ain't know. Going to happen. That's the part. <laughs> part of it. Not wait for it. That's part of my on, off, and in. Oh, there we go. There we go. So I'll sandbag that for the end. Of the hey, show. man. By the way, I went to the uh, North Carolina Clemson game last weekend. Yeah. Because I, I got a friend's got great seat. It was so much fun. Had a blast. <sighs> it's so painful, man. It's so painful to start a game and fumble inside the one yard line twice. Yeah, this has been a rough stretch for your Tar Heels. You know, and they're like, you know, if you do that, it's a completely different game. But hey, that's football, right? But man, that is brutal to watch. Yeah, I was going to text you. Because it was was right in front of me, too. It was was the end. Like, we were sitting in those suites that they have at Clemson, that one whole end zones kind of. And then they had the seats out in front of it. We were there. (laughs) Great. And just watching it happen. And it's just so depressing. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, it was funny. Yeah. Uh, You know, truth be told. Kathy, Kathy said to me, do we need to do a wellness check on Bernie? 
I, dude, I was having so much fun with my buddy that you know I, it was it was kind of fun. It became comical. Actually, the second yeah. fumble got really funny because it's like he's running, he's going in. You know, he fumbles as he's going into the end zone, and my friend just starts dying laughing. And I just I, I just turn and look at him like I can't believe I just watched that happen. I can't believe it. You know, there are some games like that when you watch, and yeah, and you'll just laugh. And 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 do you ever say to yourself, you know what? Um, we were the better team. We just lost it. Like, like for example, this is gonna this is gonna make my Eagles fans really upset. Uh-oh. But the Chiefs lost at home to the Eagles, right? Mm-hmm. There were so many drop passes. Like the Chiefs were, were the Eagles really better, or did the Chiefs just just drop some? Really what is bad the deal passes? with the Chiefs and drops this year? But yeah, twenty six, uh, twenty six drops. It leads it, the league. Yeah, I, it's crazy. I don't I don't think we were the better team. I thought it was actually very evenly matched, especially when you looked at the stats, blah blah blah, all that stuff. The scoreboard just wasn't evenly matched, and it's like. But that was like, it's funny when I looked at my fun, my buddy when we fumbled going into the end zone, I was like, that's the most North Carolina football thing I've ever seen. Yeah. Right there. It's just, that's the program in a nutshell, right? Yeah, there. right. <laughs> it was great. So, yeah, oh, it was man. so much look, fun. Look, look, I love it. I miss dude, the f- college football is almost over. I know. How, how did that happen? Oh, it's depressing. I know. I hate it. And look at this. It, it's like getting darker and darker. Seriously. Like, I'm glad that more people probably. Uh, listen to our podca- podcast and watch it because I'm like yeah. super dark. I'm telling you, it's like a tropical storm going it on. Does right look, now. It does look like I, I like it, like you know the window is going to break open and just wind's going to be flying through there. Yeah, anyway. it's it, yeah, <laughs> it's it's dark out. All right. Um. Yeah, again, we got so much to talk to so or talk mm-hmm. about. So let's keep moving on because we've got um, our power rankings. Did you, oh, by the way, did you do a new power ranking? I did, but I mean, I don't know if God, there's you really suck been at doing homework. You you were a terrible homework. I person, did it. You? Of course, never did homework. Yeah. I uh, I um, I did it because it just hasn't changed all that much. I did have one different name. Everything well, else is exactly the same. Yeah, I think I think mine changed by one as well. So we'll get to that. We've got on, off, and in. Speaking of power rankings, uh, mm-hmm. shout out to Mark Richards. Oh, by the way, another thing we're going to get into too. I had a great phone conversation with Cat about mm-hmm. the schedule so they're they're yep. starting to finalize the schedule um she said she'd come on as, she, as soon as she was comfortable kind of giving us all the dates and everything but yeah. for those of you confused about the schedule which i was i totally was i had a conversation with wally i think wally was a little confused as well i think i got some clarity from cat she's awesome and we'll talk about that too but, there we uh, go first off first off mark uh winning back-to-back opens right and, 18 matches uh, in a row by the way God, unbelievable yeah he's yeah. just killing it and uh, so here's my question to you Mm-hmm. Uh, and you and I talked about this before. So Mark is now making his way up on the all-time career titles list, right? So he's at mm-hmm. 17. Sure. You got Jamie at 19. You got Matt Guy at 20. And I remember you and I brought this up as a topic, I don't know, maybe six months ago or so. Mm-hmm. And and my question was, even if Mark passes Matt Guy, is he still going to be considered you know, the greatest in the sport and the greatest of all time. And at the time I thought probably not, you know, just because the game has changed and, and, and Matt is, is, is truly the goat, right? I mean, in in most people's opinion, however, my, here's my question is your opinion of this starting to change. And I think that mine might be like, like if, if, if he passes Matt, there are enough players that I have talked to now behind the scenes that truly think that this dude is just insane. Like he's an assassin. I mean, he's literally at a different yeah, level. And I've got I, so agreed. many ACL pros telling me the same thing that that I, I'm starting to change my opinion on this. Uh, because I think you and I were kind of on the same side of the fence that even if he passes Matt Guy, he wasn't gonna be. But now I'm not so certain once he gets to 21, if they're if everyone's just gonna say, you know what, he's the dude, he's the man. He's the, uh, he's the man right now. He's the man right now. But to to put him ahead of Matt, I mean, I, I think once again. You know, these opens didn't exist to to get these numbers all that long ago. So what would Matt Guy's numbers be had he played, had the ACL been around since 2010 and they had the opens? What his numbers would be so far out there. You know, it wouldn't be 18, 19. You're looking probably be in the 40s and 50s. Right. So those numbers would be so far out there that it's you can't you can't use these numbers and judge against Matt that way. I just you can't do that yet now. Mark keeps, I mean, Mark is the guy right now, not debatable. The and greatest look, now, not greatest all time. In my opinion, yeah. he's the greatest yeah. right now, but it's, yeah, it, I'm, it's going to take, yeah, yeah. take years of what he's doing right now to be, to, to put him in that conversation. But is he the greatest 
right this second, absolutely can't just dis- you can't you can't argue it. He's the best on the planet right now at what he does. So Matt Guy is still hands down greatest of all time. I think when you look at what Matt Guy was doing for years and years and years and years and years, yes. Yeah. Is is he on the backside of his career? I think so. Yes. Okay, I'm with you. I'm with you. But I, like I just and you know what? And actually, I'm going to prove. I'm going to prove. I'm going to. I'm going to prove your argument mm-hmm. um, even more right now, um, because not only did I look at all time career titles, I looked at major titles. I know the league doesn't like it when I say majors. Whatever nationals, majors, whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. Um, th- this still proves. Uh, you know, Matt's dominance, because when you look at, and you talk about this all the time, right? Open mm-hmm. wins and everyone agrees with this. Open wins are different than national wins, right? Yes. Um, so if you look, if you, if you break down the all time career titles a little bit more, you got, you got Matt 20 career titles could mm-hmm. be a whole lot more. You're right. I totally agree with that. 20 all time career titles, 11 major victories, right? Yes. Jamie yep. Graham, Jamie Graham, 19 all-time career titles, seven majors. Mm -hmm. And Mark Richards, 17 all-time career titles, three It's a huge difference. It's a huge look. And once again, if you gave Matt, and even Jamie for that matter, the number of events like we have with the Opens now, if you would have done this since, say, 2010, these numbers would be completely different. Mark yeah. is benefiting, and that's why I, I, that's why I think there should be an asterisk there if he does surpass them, which I think he will because he's just that guy right now. There has to be an asterisk there. You can't. It, it's impossible to judge apples and oranges, right? I mean, mm-hmm. the amount of wins you can get right now that go into those career title lists is just different than it was even four or five years ago. So to yeah. judge people that way, I think, is a little misleading. It's kind of like your DPR stat that you hate so much. You know, like it's you can't. You can't judge what Mark's doing right now against what the guys were doing five years ago because they just didn't have the ability to rack yeah. up these wins. They had four a year. And if you're going on, you know what I mean? You four or five a year, that's all you had. And now you've got 30. You know, it, it's just it's just very different and difficult to judge people that way. So is in my opinion, is Mark the best on the planet right now? Yes, I don't think it's debatable. Yeah. I don't think you can put him in greatest of all time yet because he's going to have to do this for years like Matt did. But mm-hmm. just yeah, I, okay. Uh, yep, I'm with you. I'm with you on that. I, I felt like maybe I was starting to fall the other way, but no, I'm with you. Yeah, it's um, tough. You could maybe make an argument that, but but this this would be totally. I mean, just just um, taking it out of context. You you could make make the argument that okay, if Matt guy because I can hear somebody saying this. If even if Matt Guy had had more opportunities, he still wouldn't have been facing the talent that is out there today. But but I feel like I feel like the weight of the argument of what you're saying, uh, you know, more is more that, valid. That so argument I'm, I'm gonna I'm with you. I'm with that you. argument you just made is what people said about Jack Nicholas, and he you know his numbers that were just so extreme yeah. was the depth of the PGA Tour back then what it is now, and and most people will argue that it wasn't. You know you you had it was very top heavy. You know, you could talk about five to 10 players that were great, but then after that, it was a lot of journeymen that just weren't that good, where right. nowadays the PGA Tour might go 50 deep of people that could win majors, right? And so the argument was, well, is Tiger's 15 better than Jack's, you know, 19 or whatever it is in major titles? Mm-hmm. And that, that argument's made that, you know, he was doing it against other people that are winning multiple majors. He was doing it, you know, outside of Tom Watson and a couple others, who was Jack really playing against? Yeah, and that are and that and that's where that argument's kind of the same. I, I still so can you know, make man. that? Can you make? Can you cross over and make that same argument against? I Matt? don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know. There were still some real. You know, Damon Dennis was playing against Matt. You know, some of those guys were all playing against Matt for years and years, and they're yeah. really good players themselves. I was the depth there. No, I think Matt in big tournaments got to kind of get through two or three rounds and not have to worry about it. That doesn't exist anymore. Mm-hmm. If you're not playing well early, you might lose. I don't care who you are. I yeah. don't care if you're Mark Richards. We saw it in the World Championships. Mark Richards got uh, lost first match to Sam Finley, right? You, there's talent yeah. deep in the pro division that can yeah. get you if you're off your game. And I don't know if that existed necessarily the same way 10, 15 years ago. So that, there's an argument there. I see it. I see it. Yeah. I, I think we're making good arguments for either side, but I think at the end of the day, I think I'm still on board with you. Yeah. In my opinion, you know, let's let's say Mark gets there. Let's say Mark gets there mid-season, right? Mm-hmm. Um, 
I still think Matt's greatest of all time. Mark Richards' best now, greatest now. Mm-hmm. But you're right. I think I think we I think un- unfortunately for Mark, I think he's gonna have to do a little bit more, yeah. you know, to to get that to get that great. And I think Mark now. would agree with that. I think if you asked Mark probably, off of the yeah, side, probably, would, yeah. would you say, "Hey, what do you think about this?" He'd probably like, "Dude, I got to be doing what I'm doing now for for a couple more years before I can even think of myself in that conversation." Yeah. However, you know what's another thing that's amazing about Mark, and we saw it in the semifinals of the last Open against Jeremiah Ellis, his ability to last through you playing your best. Because mm. there was a point yes. there where he was down ten two or whatever it was. Where you know Ellis had missed like one one back or whatever like he was throwing like an eleven five or what whatever he was throwing and it was insane and he was kind of taking Mark to task there for a little bit and you know, Mark's so good that he's just like all right I'm just gonna yeah. kind of ride this out I'm gonna hang around long enough but sooner or later you're not gonna play that well and I'm always going to be playing this well you know and he just and that's what happened he came back and won it's just such gosh, a great point so good man he's just yep. so good. That, that's such a great point, Bernie, and that reminds me of this past week at at uh, at the basketball tournament. So um, Anthony Grant, head coach at Dayton, he was at Alabama, yeah. was at VCU, now mm-hmm. he's at Dayton. Terrific head coach. I mean, what he's done there at Dayton is is incredible. Right so on. he said in his press conference, um, I loved it. He said he said, "How well can you play when things aren't going well?" Because because that's what happened in the first round with Dayton. Dayton was down sixty to forty five to LSU, right? Power mm-hmm. five school. LSU's got some talent, obviously, being a power five school. All of a sudden, Dayton goes on a nineteen to two run. They come all the way back and, and win it. And that's what Anthony Grant said in the press conference. How you know how how well can you play when things aren't going well? I think this is exactly what you're talking about with Mark. Yeah. How how well can you play when things aren't going well? And that's what Mark does. Mark Mark, even though things aren't going well, he's still going to fight you. Well, he's still going to be down the middle. He's still going to be consistent. He's still going to battle you and give himself a chance. Yeah, I think that's kind of what you're saying. Yeah, he's so smart too that he's yeah. like, all right, this player is playing out of their minds right now. Now, can they do this? Sure. Can they do this for an entire match? I doubt it. And if they mm. do, tip my cap, we walk off, right? And yeah. but he's still going. But Mark wasn't playing bad. You know, he wasn't playing awful. He was just, you know, someone was just playing out of their minds for a little mm-hmm. stretch there. And Mark just, I think Mark's smart enough to like, you know what? Stay down the middle. Let me do what I do. And if he ends up playing this way for an entire match and beats me 21-2 and throws an 11-5 for an entire match, I mean, tip your cap, walk away, right? Like, there's yeah. not much you can do about it. But he's smart enough to know that's only going to happen once in a blue moon, right? That That's just... That rarely happens, and he he understands that. I don't know if everyone understands that. I think you would ask them; they would tell you. They can intellectualize it for you, but I don't think when they're in the in the moment in a match, I don't think they really understand. Like, man, all right, this person's playing out of their mind. Mm-hmm. I don't need to go chase them. I don't need to start, you know, hitting crazy shots. Sooner or later, they're going to cool off, and if they don't, they don't. So be it. I, I lost to an eleven, whatever. I mean, that's yeah. it. Rarely happens, right? And then but it start, does sometimes. It, okay, right? I mean, yeah. like if it does, it does. I mean, you just tip right. your cap and you walk away. But it, more often than not, it's not going to happen. And you just have to find a way to stay in there and wait for them to finally cool off and make a couple of mistakes. Because what happens is when you're playing so well like that, you make a couple of mistakes, all of a sudden that other person starts scoring on you a little bit. It starts to rattle those people. Like, mm-hmm. oh, man, you know, I got to find it again. I got to get back in the groove. And then they get rattled. So that's what Mark does better than anybody, probably. I think Matt Guy used to be the best at that, which is funny. We're having this conversation. You yeah, know, Matt would be like, hey, all right, you're going to shoot an 11-5. Great. He saw it. Matter of fact, was it last year when we were in Corpus Christi, the first national? Or was that two years? God, my brain doesn't uh, work. Corpus anymore. Christi, first national was last year. Yeah. Okay. Matt Guy versus Devin Harbaugh. Devin just plays maybe the best match that's ever been played. Seriously, it was it was unreal. And Matt literally tipped his cap. He was like, you know, if yeah. somebody's going to play like that, what do you do? I mean, seriously, what do you do? Nothing He's collecting bags. He, you could have had a bag across the auditorium on the floor, and somehow he would have find, found a way to collect it. I mean, he was yeah. out of his mind. You know, and you just tip your cap. Like, hey, you're going to do that for an entire match. You win. Yeah. But you're going to have to play that well to beat me. You know, and that's what Matt has, and that's what Mark has. He's like, you can beat me, but you're going to have to play at a level that most people can't play. Yeah. And that's that's what they do. But, yeah, anyway, I digress. 
No, no, that's all. That's all good stuff. I, I love what you're saying. And one, one more thing about Mark. Um, then we got to move on. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I still feel like mentally, and not that anyone's going to disagree with this, but mentally, uh, you know, you you you've watched and covered a lot of sports. I've I've watched and broadcast a lot of other sports, seen uh, you know top level players um, at other major sports, and to me, Mark Richards mentally crosses over probably more than anyone else more than more than anyone else in our sport of cornhole just just his mental toughness to be able to compete and his and his insane ability to be able to focus focus is something yes. that 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 i that i see in other sports i don't see it out of everybody in other sports but high level players out of college football and basketball and baseball mm-hmm. that 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 ability he has that mental toughness that he has and that ability to focus is special. Uh, I don't see that much in our sport. I don't see it much in other sports, but he crosses over being one of those top athletes that I've actually seen that has that ability. It's, it's crazy. I think our sport is, is mainly focus, right? It's not, it's it's not physically, you know, it's not overly physical in what you have to do, right? It's ability to focus for a long period of time. Yeah. I th- it's crazy how they're able to do it. Like I might be able to do it for like five minutes. Like I'll be in the, you know, playing pretty well for five minutes. And then once that's gone, my focus is gone. I'm throwing ones, right? Yeah. Like all of a sudden it's just over. And I don't have that ability to focus like that. And these guys can just I'm, I'm right there lock, I, they can just lock in for hours at a time. And it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, when the wheels start to come off, I'm just, mm-hmm. I'm just, I'm just, I'm going off the cliff. Yeah, yeah. I get mad for a second, then I'm like, oh, this is ridiculous. I mean, what am I getting mad about? <laughs> I'm the worst ever. I gotta suck. Yeah. <laughs> so funny. The uh, the schedule. Um, yes. We had Stacy on a few weeks. We were talking about the schedule. <laughs> um, you know, Stacy knows it. Trey knows it. Cat knows it. Uh, it. I think it was a little bit difficult to understand and to verbalize because we're not privy to all those conversations. So we have not seen the evolution of what they're doing now with the schedule. Uh Um, Thank you so much to Kat. Uh, I I finally, I just called her this morning. I said, listen, uh, Bernie and I are going on in a couple hours for a Thanksgiving podcast. Really want to talk about the schedule and kind of clarify anything uh, because I really didn't get it. And, and I know Stacy was kind of poking fun at us because because we didn't get it, but um, it, I think it's I, I think because I mentally just had been so trained in the last four years, you know, uh, of the way we've been th- doing things, it was just yeah. hard for me to kind of let go of what I what I had already known. Um, but anyway, so I had a great talk with Kat this morning, and, and I think and I think we got the schedule figured out. What I, what I was most concerned with after talking with Stacy, and again, this is on me. I'm not. I'm not. This is not on Stacy. Is that I came away with that conversation saying, "Wait a second, if we're going to go to this pro series where everything counts the same, uh, we're going to lose. We're going to lose the the nationals, right? And and I, yeah. you know, people like people like me, media geeks, and and you know, broadcasters, whatever. I, I like to talk about this kind of stuff, just like we were talking about today. Yeah. I think I think that it matters that Matt Guy has not only won twenty career titles, but he's got eleven major wins. I, I right. think I think that's fun to talk about. I love that in golf. And I thought maybe we were going to be losing our nationals and losing our majors. And 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 we are we we kind of are, but not really. After talking to Cab, so basically it's going to be a sixteen week schedule. There's going to be event, an event every other week. So we'll mm-hmm. have eight. We'll have basically eight eight big weekends. Yep. Those weekends will rotate between um, a national format and a shootout format. Yep. So they are, they are combining everything, which I like, right? They're, they're combining the schedule just to try and make it easy. So it's now going to be a pro series. So these eight weekends are going to be a pro series. So you're going to take your top three national finishes. You're going to take your top pro shootout finish. And, and that's going to be your points um, for your, for your pro ranking. Mm-hmm. So you can play in every you can play in every shootout now if you want. So it's not going to be a shootout like like we've had in the past where the winners advance to a championship. Right. You can play in every shootout. So at some point, will they change the name? Yeah, they'll probably have to try and think of some way of tweaking that. You can actually play in every single one now, even though you're only taking, even though you're only let's say let's say you win one, right? You can't yep. win any more points than than maxing out your points getting a win. But you'll still want to play in the others because now I got a chance to block you from winning. And still ah, keep yes. you from getting more points. Yep. So is is that making sense, or am I already confusing everybody? 
No, I think it makes perfect sense. And and those weekends will be bigger than even that. I mean, a lot of those weekends are going to have other things thrown in. Oh, there yeah. Too, all these know. weekends, all these weekends are going to be team huge. events. And, and that's you're the gonna thing. Have, they're all yeah. they're all going to be big weekends. So 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 we we will have it's not, they're, they're not going to be really called nationals or shootouts anymore. It's going to be national format, which is first to 21 mm-hmm. and the shootout format, which is round limited. limited. Yeah. They will all carry the same amount of weight. Um, and, and, and I, I think this was the best thing that Kat said is that, is that at the end of the day, at the end of the season, Stacy wanted to know who's the best player, not who's the best shootout player, not who's the best national player, who is the best player in the sport. So by combining this, giving them equal weights and, and, and just, you know, doing a national format first to 21 and a shootout format, which is mm-hmm. round limited, you got to play well in both. To, to find who the best player is. So yeah, after I, talking with Cat, I hope I've verbalized this well, but after talking with Cat, I'm like, okay, I see where everything's going now. There's still going to be a national format, so we can, and, and they're still, I mean, there will still, these these events are, are instead of having four nationals, we're basically going to have eight, you know, because the, these eight events mm-hmm. will still carry more weight than the Opens. Your argument that you've made since the beginning of time that, that you know, these nationals mean more than Opens is still going to, it's still going to yeah. matter. And I and I think we still need to keep a tally of that in the career titles, but um, but I do like this format. I do like that it's it's becoming a pro series, and I love the I love at the end of the day, the you know the thought by Stacy that I want to know regardless of the platform, who is the most valuable player, who's the top player. So yeah. ho- hopefully that makes some sense. Sure, I I mean it it, it makes sense. It's just. I like it. It's kind of like all right, NASCAR, right? You have you have your speedway, your super speedway events. You have your short, short track. track events. It's kind of the same kind of thing. You're just you're mixing it all up to kind of find out who's the overall best driver, right? Well, exactly. The, this is the same kind of thing. You're mixing it up to kind of find out who is the overall best player. Who yes. you know? But and they do still have look. There's going to be players that are still round limited specialists. I think Ryan Smith to me is one of those players that just seems yes. to do better in round limited format than he does in a game to 21, at least in singles. Um, there are others that kind of go the other way. I mean, there are still players and and I've heard them, you know, off the record and like, they didn't know I was kind of standing near them that still can't stand round limited mm. format. Can't stand yeah, it. They, you I've know, it's just, too. it's not real cornhole, but whatever. It, but, know, but, but to your, but to your point, you know what? I'm sure there are some drivers who hate short track. Absolutely. And then some got to do it. Got to yeah. do it. If you're going to be the best in the world, you got to do it. You got to figure Absolutely. it out. Yep. Figure it out. That's the best way to put it. If you're as good as you think you are, figure it out. Right. I mean, right. it's not, I mean, your, your talent levels there, all you have to do is kind of adjust your, you know, the way you approach it just a little bit. Right. It's not, it's not a huge adjustment, just a little adjustment. Right. And are you willing uh, to make it? Your example of Ryan Smith, let's use him as an example. Let's say he wins the first shootout format. Mm-hmm. event right yep. um so he maxes out his points because you're only taking one um you know yep. whatever, whatever your top score is from your from your best event that's it but again he can still play in the others just to try and block mark try and block jamie graham try and block someone else from winning that and maxing out those points and keeping his rankings so I sure. thought that was kind of interesting too so that anyway that's my understanding uh, I hope that's right. I think that's right. Uh, again, huge thank you to Kat, as always, saving the day, kind of helping me with that. And um, hopefully that helps clear up. I think in a way it actually helps the Opens. I think it makes the Opens a little more valuable now because of the way they're doing that system. I mean, the Opens do matter. The Opens matter like to who you are as a player. Yeah, and, and they're I, their I, own series. So you got yeah. the Open Series and the Pro yeah. Series now. I, I think it's great. I do. So, I mean, I, I was kind of a, like, there was a while there that I wasn't all that enamored with the opens. You know, I was just like, well, I mean, it's cool. It's a big win way to go, but it's, you know, it's still different. It's still going to be different at these big events. If you're it exactly because we've seen it the last two years in the open series, we've seen people win opens in singles and doubles that just simply haven't fared well when it mm-hmm. came to national because it's a different mindset. All the other pros are approaching it differently. It's just different. And I think yeah. the players will see that when they get there, the first timers. But uh, yeah, it's. I think it'll be interesting. It's not really that much of a change, to be honest. It's 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 it, not. It, it, it's, it's not a it's, huge change. It's just yeah. Yeah, I, and I think I think maybe when Stacy less said it, travel. I mean, yeah, I, I love that the schedule is 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 regulated now. You know, sixteen weeks every other week, eight big events, 
yeah. then of course worlds would be on top of that because it was so hard for a lot of people to get to all those events i mean it's just a lot of time you know the way yeah. it was set up before i mean you were we were on the road gosh yeah. crazy but yeah. yep but so I, I liked it because I, I was like i said I, I was most afraid that we were losing the the you know the the moniker of winning a major but now basically like i said this is a pro series so you know you can you can have 40 career titles and how many pro series events have you won so that's kind of going to kind of be like our major you know what i mean mm-hmm. yep. so you'll have your you'll have your total wins and your pro series wins so i don't know it, it'll be it'll be good i'm i'm yeah. I'm, I'm glad to get that clarified so you feeling better about who knows it? maybe that entire 10 minute conversation was only for me <laughs> <So>. <laughs> no i think I there's a lot like, of people just, that are having just some issues, issues so yeah yeah um all right oh my gosh yeah you ready to move on we got 10 minutes left we still got to do our power wow. five or i mean our uh, power rankings and our uh, on off and in yeah i'm ready man all right let's uh let's do our power rankings first and and yeah this is this is probably not going to be Huge. I mean, even even I, I, probably because Mark won it, um, and it's and this is it just just kind of pull back the curtain. My power rankings is 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 becoming really difficult because not only is the depth of talent getting greater, mm-hmm. um, you know, I, I don't. It'd be nice every week again if we had. You know, I've talked about this before. If we had like a like an SID, you know, like a media relations person, it'd mm-hmm. be great to get a press release, an email, you know, saying, "All right, here's who's all playing this weekend." Yeah. So that when I see the results, I know, okay, you know, here's who, here's who didn't play. Um, so that, that's, what's becoming hard for me is that the depth of talent is becoming greater and greater. And, and I, I still don't know exactly who's where every weekend, like who was in Memphis, who was in Rhode Island, who wasn't there really more importantly. Right. So, so for me, uh, my list really didn't change a whole lot because uh, Mark said it. My, um, my list is essentially exactly the same except for one position. Okay, go ahead. Uh, I've still got Ryan Windsor and Jake Gore tied for 10. Okay. I've still got Devin Harbaugh at nine, even though he won where he was, I believe in mid Atlantic. He did win, you know, obviously it was a pretty loaded, uh, field at the open. So Devin wasn't there. So winning where he won, I think it's almost like, you know, it's awesome because you won, but you should have won considering depth of talent. So, yeah. But he did what he had to do, so he stays in my top ten. Number eight is, uh, you know, my weird, my weird position. Welcome Jeremiah Ellis, who's been playing unbelievable cornhole to start this season, and he's playing yeah. with a chip on his shoulder, coming over from a different, different league. I think there's a lot of weight he's trying to carry with where he once was, trying to prove how great things are there as players. I think he's carrying that with him, and I think he's using that as a chip on his shoulder. I think he's playing amazing cornhole. He was the one that had Mark. You know, he was he was playing at a level that you just just so hard to stay at that level, right? Mm-hmm. Throwing, you know, when you're throwing plus elevens against someone like Mark, still gave him a heck of a game, right? Still, he's still right there. But uh, he's, he's my, yep. yeah. He, I mean, he's quote unquote rookie in name only, but I think he's proven that he's uh, he's an elite level talent in the ACL pro division. So good for him. Got him at eight, seven through one, exactly the same from last week. Caleb bats in seven. I've still got JBJ in at number six, Ryan trader. I'm keeping him in at five, keeping him there at five Fisher Hamilton at four. Still got Jamie at three, Tony Smith at two. And anyone that doesn't have Mark Richards, number one right now, I don't know if you're really paying attention. Yeah. You're not watching this forward. Yeah. All right. Uh, mine, mine very similar. I've got Jake, uh, at number ten, I've got Ryan Windsor at number nine. So I, I put I put Ryan back in my top ten this week. Uh, Devin Harbaugh at number eight. Mm-hmm. Number seven, I've got Kyle Malone. Number six, I've still, I still I still like Gavin Cano. I, I'm just I'm just I think he's just sure. such a dangerous player. Like I mentioned last week, so I'm, I'm putting him six. And he's become you know? kind of this double specialist, right? I mean, he's just yeah. You put him on a doubles board, and he's you know a doubles format. He's winning. He's gonna win it. Yep. Yeah. I still like him on the single side too. I just think he's dangerous. Again, if I had to go to war with somebody, who am I taking? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So again, Jake, Ryan, uh, Devin, Kyle, Gavin, and then um let me that brings me down to my five. My five top five, same. Jamie Graham, Fisher Hamilton, Caleb Batson three, Tony Smith two, and Mark Richards number one. But I will say on my kind of honorable mention, keeping my eye on. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I actually took Justin Burton Jr. out of my top 10 just because I can't figure out, I can't figure out the last two weekends is, is cause I, I think I've seen this yeah. name in doubles. So is he not, is he not playing singles? Is he just playing doubles? Is he not playing well in singles? But anyway, until I figure out this question, 
Um, I'm, I'm taking him just out of my top 10. But Jeremiah Ellis, I, I was just talking with Wally the other day. And Wally, just like you, I mean, I'll, obviously Wally's seen him firsthand. Dude is is killing it. So I'm keeping my eyes on Jeremiah Ellis, honorable mention. Adam Hisner. I mean, I feel like we Played need to mention good. his name. I mean, yes. back-to-back weekends now. I mean, I don't know what's going on with him. If he's rededicated himself, uh, practicing more. Uh, I mean, he's always been great. Um, I don't know what's going on with that dude, but got to at least mention him. Uh, Jacob Trzinski. I mean, I, he always plays well in Rhode Island, so it is what it is. Another big weekend for JT this past weekend. And then Ryan Trader. I mean, so if you look at my honorable mention top five, I, I, I just feel like we'd be remiss if we didn't at least mention I mean, one that. day we'll probably have to take this out to 25 or to 20. <laughs> Because I mean, seriously, the there are. So, doing it. I mean, there are so many good players that I, you know, I mean, a Logan Chamberlain not being in the top ten, he's playing really well right now. I mean, there's just there's so many players that yep. that that could be in the top ten that just aren't. Yeah, and I'm waiting just, for a singles it, it, win for Logan, and then he I'm was, waiting. He I'm waiting win. for you know our first our first big big weekend, you know, our first big weekend of those eight. Yeah, to really the pro series, the pro I'm series. waiting for the pro series to really, to truly solidify my top ten, because I think it's going to be, yeah. I think the cream always rises, and I think we'll see a lot in that first one. Be interesting to see if we we're right on any of our picks. Save your picks. Be kind of oh, fun to sure. see these evolve. I've, I've actually been putting them in a notebook and kind of see how they evolve and and see what it looks like for the for the first pro series event. God, yeah. I hope I explained that right. It, it's, I mean, it's it is what it is. There's those weekends are bigger than those tournaments. So that's, you know, when you get the team events in there and you get some other stuff going on, those weekends become much bigger than just those tournaments. Yeah. And that's why it's even more of a. All, all eight weekends are huge. Yeah. They're all, they're all big. All right. You ready for on, off, and in? I guess, man. I struggled with this one because I had two different ideas I wanted to go with. And I don't know. One of them felt so just about me <laughs> that uh, I had to, I, I changed it and went, went with a Thanksgiving theme. So. Ah, I like it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We'll probably only have time for yours because I just looked at the clock. We got like two minutes. So go ahead. All you right. do yours and then on the board, on. overeating and on Thanksgiving. Love it. <laughs> Love it. And everyone's okay with it, right? Like just no one gets it, mad yeah. at you. Well, like if you just gorge yourself for it, you know, and it's not just Thanksgiving Day, you get the leftovers. I love everything about it. I love the fact that it's okay to just gorge for an entire week. Uh off the board. Is ham the best meat for Thanksgiving? I know people love turkey. Oh, I'm actually I, a ham guy. I, I, I like love. It. We're I doing love both. The ham. We're yeah, both. We, always, we I think we always have both. But I think I think I'm off the board on that because the ham is actually my favorite part of all yeah. of that. I think it's better than the turkey. So Tur that's my turkey's off the still board. my favorite. But but I do I I do eat the ham as well. I'm in the hole. Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday. I think it's the best holiday. I'm in the hole on that one. It's always been my favorite. It is a good well, one. More so than any of the others. I love Thanksgiving. Um, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna save my I'm gonna save my on and in. Oh yeah, week. yeah, because wow. I can kind of cross over my off, and you'll appreciate this one. And I'm not gonna be the first to say this. My off the board as we go off to a different sport, Florida State football. What the hell are you doing playing North Alabama in Week 12? A lot of people you do, know? It, but yeah, yeah. No, but but everyone needs to. This needs to be a cautionary tale. Like, don't do this. It's week twelve. You are one week away from playing your arch rival, and then going into the college football playoffs. Right? Yep. You're playing North Alabama. Nothing good can happen from that. If you lose it, God forbid, everyone gets fired. If you win it, you should win it. If you win it by sixty, you should win it. Yep. But it, I mean, Jordan Travis, right? It's terrible. Starting quarterback. Terrence is ACL done for the season. And, and he, the kid was great about it. You know, in social media, he said, listen, you know, even though my career is done at Florida state, um, you know, I, I'm never going to, I'm never going to forget all my memories. And I cherish my memories at Florida state, but you know yeah. what, what are you doing? Florida state playing North Alabama week 12. Don't do it. These teams. And, and, and I'm just calling out Florida state, but you're right. A lot of teams Alabama do does it. Georgia. Does. I mean, everyone has that, that game. It's usually do it in, the beginning, this do it in the beginning of the season. That's well, fine. They, that's the problem. They do it. They do it in both. It's, yeah, don't it's, do it in week twelve. I, mean, I, just, I hear just, you. It, it's that, that it, is. It's become a problem because every team's starting to do it now. They they have their early four game schedule right before you get to conference, and then there's one one double A team that everyone throws in kind of in the last three or four weeks. And it's yeah, I'm with you. There's nothing good. It's the only thing that can happen is you get injured because you're going to win the game. Maybe you get maybe you get to look at some of the kids that haven't played as much. Right. Yeah. Maybe, maybe that's the game. Maybe that's what they should have done. All right. Let's see what yeah, the second. Don't, yeah, yeah. Don't start Jordan Travis. Yeah. You know, let's see what you get. And if you have to bring him in, then maybe you got real problems. 
right? But that's what you find out in a game like that. But yeah, it's right. cautionary tale, man. I'm with you. It's awful. All right, dude, we got to run, which is too bad because my on the board is another, is another offense versus defense stat that you were just going <laughs> to love. You were going to love and, and related to corner. It's terrific. I'll save it for next week. Hopefully it'll be as good. The stats this week were perfect for it. I don't know if it'll fit my argument next, <laughs> next week. As well, hopefully. All right, uh, everybody, thank you so much for watching. As always, have a great Thanksgiving. And Bernie, uh, good luck with the dog and enjoy your next. Uh, uh, who knows if it's hours. even inside, man. It's probably still out there running around. <laughs> He's waiting for you to come out so we can attack oh, you again. Psyched. <laughs> yeah. All right, dude. Happy Thanksgiving. All right, brother. You too. All right, man. Bye, everybody.